Hi, hello and welcome to another video. Fernando Munoz Fernal is my name. Fermove is the channel. Welcome to today's video. Before we start, may I ask you to please check that you are still subscribed to this channel. I have more than 36,000 subscribers, but I get very few views on my videos, which is doesn't add up. So do me a favor, make sure that you still subscribe because I see the numbers going up, going down, going up, going down, which is not right. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the video today. Today, we're going to talk about J.D. Vance becoming the vice president candidate with Donald Trump and what that means for China. So welcome to today's video. After Donald Trump's uh, life was put at risk by some incredible failures by the U.S. Secret Service protocol, Donald Trump is almost surely the next president of the United States. He's going to be POTUS 47. At uh, RNC 2024, just a couple of days ago, there were a few Trump haters that came to speak and praise Donald Trump. People like porn star Amber Rose, who can be seen here delivering her speech, something that seems unimaginable. It was at this event that Trump himself announced his running mate, another anti-Trump convert, J.D. Vance. So let's talk about who he is. How did he change his mind about Donald Trump? And more importantly for us residents on this side of the Pacific Ocean, what does choosing J.D. Vance as his vice president mean for China come November 2024? Well, J.D. Vance is a 39-year-old Republican U.S. Senator from uh, Ohio. He has been serving uh, since 2023, it's his first term. And um, he gained some national prominence with his 2016 memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, which uh, offered a personal perspective on his growing up and his personal struggles as white working class in Appalachia. Vance's background uh, also includes service in the Marines and graduating from Yale Law School. He is well known in conservative circles for his very conservative views. And uh, he recently said something that has given people around China a lot of hope. So I want to dissect that a little bit. Watch here. The Chinese have a foreign policy of roads and bridges and feeding poor people. And I think that we should pursue a foreign policy, a diplomacy of respect and a foreign policy that is not rooted in moralizing. I would have to say that his observation on Chinese diplomacy is spot on. That's exactly what China does. So it is OK to agree on certain aspects of what he just said. And it is tempting to, to feel hope. And uh, it, but it's also realistic to understand that our hopes should be measured. So let's talk first about some of the positives. A positive aspect of a Trump Vance administration is the fact that these people are very transactional, as you can see. They are pragmatic people, and one can think that they would want to continue doing business with China and the world, of course, because that is one way to keep the US dollar out of trouble and to keep China in the good graces so to speak, so that they continue buying debt or not selling debt as fast as they are. It's the main thing. They, they need to keep the US dollar being relevant in international trade. And that's a positive because it makes them predictable. They, Trump and Vance and the whole American government, know that there are no plans that are immediate to rebuild Nord Stream 2. They understand that that is a done deal that they managed to make the EU dependent on American oil and American gas and American energy. So that's a win. They also understand that the status of EU countries as vassal states has been solidified. They know that these countries will do America's bidding whenever they're asked to do so. The other thing is that they will make these EU, EU countries and EU allies pay a larger amount for running NATO. The EU uh, can only rely on the US for nuclear deterrence against Russia. This is something that is stipulated on the Project 2025 book and is something that we discuss with Jerry Gray on this video right here. You can go check it out after this one. 
In addition to this, having sent old and obsolete armament to Ukraine did help them a lot on restocking the U.S. arsenal with modern weapons. So no matter which angle you look at this, no matter from what point, or what perspective, this has been a win for America. But it is time to move on. All wars must come to an end, right? So merely the plan to stop the Ukraine war is enough to make you think, oh, this is going to be a great administration. And I would agree. Yeah, face value, that's what you would feel. However, once again, when you go and look at the book Project 2025, which is written as a guideline for the next uh, Republican president, that's Donald Trump and his partner, J.D. Vance, this book tells us where things are headed, where things are going. And they know, actually, J.D. Vance gave a speech talking about this, that there's such a thing as scarcity in military equipment production. One of the attitudes that I think is very, very dominant at the Munich Security Conference is the idea of the American superpower that can do everything all at once. And what I'm telling you is that we live in a world of scarcity, a world of scarcity in weapons manufacturing and America's capacity to make the critical machinery of war. And that world of scarcity is what I'm trying to get us all to wake up to. In that world of scarcity, we can't support Ukraine and the Middle East and contingencies in East Asia. It just doesn't make any sense. The math doesn't work out in terms of weapons manufacturing. The book understands and the book outlines in great detail the impossibility of America to continue financing and supplying weapons on multiple theaters simultaneously. It, it cannot be done. And that is the key point that makes this very contradictory. Understand something. They do not want to stop the war machine as such. That's not what they want. What they do want is to drop this one war in Europe that is, it's not going to achieve anything or whatever it could achieve, it has already achieved it, as I just mentioned. But they want to focus now on the next coming war. Actually, one of them has already started. Israel taking on Iran with the full support of the United States. And of course, as the book says it, they're going to frame it as bringing freedom and democracy for the people of Iran, as they always do. But this is such a double whammy. It's, it's an objective that is going to give them two things. Number one, if they are successful, they will control Central Asia and the Middle East as well as being able to break this highly feared alliance of China, Russia, Iran and North Korea. They failed to do so with Russia. It, it backfired tremendously. It actually brought these two countries much closer together than they ever were. Consider that today the renminbi is used for trade between the two countries. The SWIFT has been replaced by China's system. Resources and money keep flowing in and out of the countries at a higher rate, particularly to those small Dongbei banks that we see being restructured. You can check out this video over here if you haven't seen that video. And, and the thing is that all of this is possible because the United Nations has not sanctioned Russia. Therefore, China is in the clear here. It's absolutely okay for them to continue doing trade with Russia as with Ukraine. That's an important thing to consider. But we all know that the big thing for the United States is being able to contain China. So to revisit J.D. Vance's speech from a few minutes ago, it is very hard, very, very hard to take a person whose opinions do a 180 on such serious matters so quickly, for real. You cannot trust this person. He goes, for example, from hating Trump to something else like being his vice president. Watch here. As somebody who doesn't like Trump, myself, the elites were right about Donald Trump, right? I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. He's the best president of my lifetime, and he revealed the corruption in this country like nobody else. I can't stomach Trump. I think that he's noxious and is leading the white working class to a very dark place. I think that he was a good president. I think he made a lot of good decisions for people. I think you're not a Trump supporter from what I've read. Am I right? Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't vote for Trump. All around. 
was a great president. I'm 37 years old. Certainly the best president of my lifetime. So that's the thing. In March of this year, it was very opportunistic for Vance to be saying that, oh, they should try the diplomacy of respect. But the truth of the matter is that he is on the ballot as of yesterday. What does that mean? It means that he and Trump must juggle, must find a way to implement the directives that are stated by this right-wing hawks behind the Project 2025, which states the following, and I quote, the Chinese Communist Party has been at war with the US for decades. Now that this reality has been accepted throughout the government, the State Department must be prepared to lead the U.S. diplomatic effort accordingly. So what kind of diplomacy are we going to have? Is it going to be a diplomacy of respect? Or is it going to be a diplomacy of, hey, you, you have been at war with us? I don't know where they get that idea, but do you know what I'm saying? We just get more mixed messages as always. These opinions just change with the wind. Who are we to believe and what are they going to do? Think about the fact that Vance says that he cannot stomach Trump one day, but the next day, oh, Trump is America's future. Oh, I am the vice president together with Donald Trump. One day he says that the U.S. should have diplomacy of respect, yet we all know that his mentor, Peter Thiel, a person who's very heavily invested in tech industry, cannot accept, will not accept, does not want reunification of Taiwan. He fears losing control of the cheap manufacturing ability of the island that belongs to China. So what kind of diplomacy are you going to have there? So what do I expect from this winning ticket, Trump and Vance, when it comes to China? I expect more sanctions, uh, more tariffs, more instability in the South China Sea, obviously via Philippines and the province of Taiwan. <laughs> diplomacy of respect when you have troops on the island. Diplomacy of respect when your diplomats break diplomatic protocol. Diplomacy of respect when you're selling weapons to Taiwan, which is part of China. One China. That's the thing. I also expect uh, a move from NATO into Asia, which is now going to be paid by Japan, South Korea, Australia, the Philippines most likely as well. Continued attempts at uh, isolating China by debilitating its strong supporters like Russia with the war and Iran if Israeli gets his way. I also expect more skirmishes along the Indian border with this very wicked idea of neutrality that they practice over there. And perhaps the more worrying thing, the thing that I'm more concerned about is attacks on BRI project, Belt and Road Initiative projects uh, around the world. This book says that the Pentagon and the Department of Defense are now in charge of countering BRI projects around the world. What does that mean? This is, this is very sad. It's not only bad for China, but it's also going to be terrible for those countries that have invested so much. For those countries who have an economy that is changing, who have a future and a connection to the world trade and, and, and to getting out of poverty because of these projects that now might be bombed or destroyed or... Do you know what I mean? What does the Pentagon build? What does the Department of Defense, which used to be known as a Department of War, what do they build? Nothing. One can expect that what they're going to do is destroy all these projects, and that's, that's the sad part. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing. Make sure that you are still subscribed, because I keep losing subscribers day in and day out. It's very weird. It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. So make sure that you still subscribe to this channel. It would really, really help me. And uh, yeah, uh, until I see you again. Take it easy and bye for now.